Good morning, Doug here from the Hundredfold Journey. Thanks again for joining us with this uh, Sundays with Doug. And we are all on a journey together and we're coming alongside of you to help rewire your brain, build new habits and create a new identity. Because a Hundredfold is about a group of people who are looking to find their true identity and by doing so finding God's true identity. And we do have the power to choose. And in fact, that's what uh, the series that we're in right now called We Have the Mind of Christ is we do get to choose what we think about and how we want to respond to, uh, to given situations or circumstances. So uh, we're going to be talking about that in detail today. Uh, each week we talk about the 10 truths. These are things that are true about us. Uh, these are truths about the way we can live our life and rewire our brain. Each week we talk about memorizing, applying, and meditating upon these truths because, again, these truths are true for you. Um, so with that said, for those that are online, uh, was there an experience this last week where you may have encountered one of these 10 truths? And if so, could you please uh, share your experience? So, like yeah. I think I heard Rachel. Go ahead, Rachel. First. Go ahead, Rachel. Okay. Um, I have one, and I'm not sure exactly. I think it, it meets the criteria for like maybe two or three, but I'll, okay. I want to see what you they, guys think. And by the way, they usually always do. There's usually more than just one. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, uh, very common. Okay. Um, so yesterday I had a client call me on Saturday morning and we had done her house the week before and she was upset because her toaster, I unplugged it because it was making this really weird noise and I hadn't even like done anything. I just kind of accidentally pushed a button and it was making this weird noise so I unplugged it and I forgot to tell her and then you know I kind of just thought well no big deal you know she can plug it in later and try to figure out what's going on well she called yesterday and she was really upset about it and oh, wow. um, you know I, I yeah she I was not happy and I have kind of a relationship with her I mean she's kind of been more than just a client she's been a friend and um her mother recently passed so you oh, know wow. we've kind I've kind of tried to like she's alone she doesn't have a husband or children so you know I I can tell she's lonely um but yeah so it kind of shocked me I was like wow like it didn't seem like a big deal to me and the way that she kind of she was just really mad at me. And um, my first instinct was to be angry and be, mm. you know, defensive and like, you know, I can't believe that she's mad at me about this. And, you know, kind of feel like, well, I thought that our relationship was more important than a toaster. Yeah, <laughs> and, really. And then, and then in my head, I was like, you know what, how can I put peace in my heart about this and just say, instead of, being angry and trying to attack her or respond with like a lot of negativity. And I just was like, how can I, you know, mm. just be peaceful about this. And um, I, I don't know, that was like a shift in like, that was definitely a rewiring for me because mm. in the past I would have just been angry and, and written her off. And now I'm yeah. kind of, you know, thinking like, well, it's, this is probably not about me. I, I can't take it personally. And so I kind of thought um, circumstances don't matter, only state of being matters. Yep. Um, you know, that that was just a, a circumstance that, you know, could have been negative, but I'm trying to, you know, be pe more peaceful and positive about it. Yeah. And have an attitude of gratitude. Yeah. Mm hmm. No, that, that's fantastic. And uh, uh, so the, the, when you look at it differently and you use the word shift, and I really like that, is rather than seeing the circumstance for what it is, you can almost look behind it, right? And with your friend, um, 
there obviously was much more than just a toaster. There was something else behind that. And then you can be God to someone today by showing them love or compassion and not responding the way maybe you normally would. You can shift and look, look behind it and look at what's really driving that. And then, you know, still being a friend and still being supportive despite the circumstance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, very good. I love that. Thanks for sharing. Uh, Jeremy? Yeah, so um, yesterday, me and uh, Michael, we were sparring at the gym. And when I was uh, heading back to my car, I was about to leave and I thought I misplaced my phone. And I walked back, checked everything, walked back in and kind of looked by it and thought someone stole it. So I started working myself and up on all and all that. And like then started throwing accusations at, at, a, at a guy. Mm. yeah like not like horribly like oh you stole my phone like yeah. give it up you know i was just like hey man do you know my phone is and then you know his actions after me asking you know kind of striked up my the negative thinking i was having you know like yeah. oh this guy is acting really suspicious you know i just asked him about my phone and now he's leaving the gym yeah and I, and so i was like but then i was like okay hold on slow down for a second and I spent like the next 30 minutes just at the gym, constantly walking back in and out of the gym and yeah. talking with all the employees, just being like, hey, can you try just trying to figure out, okay, did I leave it somewhere? Is it just dropped it? Did someone take it? And the people, like, I started like changing the way I was thinking, of, like, okay, don't be accusatory, slow down, constantly like reach for try and retrace my steps and all that. And you know, at the end, of it, it just fell in, <laughs> fell so into a black hole in my car. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I walked back in and I was like, yeah, it, it was my dumb ass. It was my, you know, <laughs> my stupid self. It, I, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it was, it was kind of, I guess you could say it was the state of being the, the sorry, looking at the list. Uh, circumstances don't matter yeah because you know i was my phone wasn't stolen it wasn't lost it wasn't lost i just it just fell somewhere in my car and uh life is a mirror i guess because you know i was kind of yes it was like my phone is my livelihood you know if someone takes my phone they're pretty much taking my life yeah you know so I was like, I was getting super defensive, but then I was like, wait, it was probably just me being ADHD. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I, I really like that you chose life as a mirror. So how do you think that, what was the reflection that came back to you on that? Um, well, it was at first I was like, okay, why? Well, it's, I think that. I thought of, oh, someone did something horrible to me, at, you know, as me accusing of, oh, someone stole my phone mm -hmm. was because it was, you know, all those little things over life kind of pick up over time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those, you know, the habits, the perceived habits of certain things. Yep. So I was like, okay, I've had a lot of, you know, I've had issues with people taking from me. Ah. For the simple for the simple reason of oh he looks like he's easy to take yeah. from or yeah. something like that, so I was like okay what the heck someone someone's doing this to me again and it's not something cheap that I can easily replace you know like that's and so I I was reflecting all that negativity that I've constantly experienced but then when I stopped and was like okay stop being accusatory stop yeah. thinking that it's other people causing this yeah this stop hard, being a victim this, this negativity stop being i know a victim. I, was, I i stopped for a second once i realized oh wait i'm accusing some random dude who i just who <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know and so i was like i went yeah i went through the proper steps of like okay trace steps let people know just in case but then it was just oh it just fell in my car <laughs> so now now now, building new habits, rewiring your brain, 
the process now is what what did you and and you don't have to answer this now and and we're going to move on but but now i would highly recommend that you reflect upon that and you go what caused that to happen what was it in my past what is it in my history that causes me not to trust people and why did i react the way i did now what what's awesome about it is that you caught yourself and this, and I'm getting tingles just thinking about it because Jeremy, you know, you're growing and you're changing and you're rewiring your brain, right? So you actually had, you caught yourself and you said, no, wait a second. That's not the way, that's not who I am. So you caught yourself and that was, that's terrific. But then the other half is why did it come up in the first place? And now it's a growth opportunity for you. Now you can see that and go, what caused me to do that? What, what beliefs do I have about myself that caused me to do that? And sometimes it go, you have to go back into your past. You have to go into your childhood, you know, the way your parents raised you or different beliefs that you have about losing things that are yours and accusing other people. So that's where life is a mirror, right? You now have these opportunities to look at that and go, hmm, I think I need to change that. Because it's not to, it's not uh, it's not healthy, right? Does that make sense? Yep, one hundred percent. Yeah. So any, so anyways, uh, very good. And we use the, all those opportunities, and and even the uh, the one with the uh, um, the toaster, right? With Rachel is is looking at that and and uh, you know seeing that reflection, and then and then making changes. So very good, guys. Thank thank you for sharing. I, I appreciate that, and uh, um, and I know people that are listening uh, after this will will really appreciate that. So we're now in this series called uh, "We Have the Mind of Christ." We have been talking each week about this map of consciousness level, and and uh, you know this could be that mirror that gets reflected back to us. Uh, so for Rachel and and Jeremy that shared right? When you, how you reacted, the mirror reflects where you at on this, this map of consciousness, you know, were you coming from fear or anger or acceptance or love and joy? So this, th that's how the mirror kind of reflects back is where, where is your current state of being? Um, so this is also a helpful tool to see, you know, where we're at. So let's kind of keep that in mind as as uh, as we go through our days. Uh, this is a quick review, just how powerful is our mind, uh, how God designed us to be co-creators. And if you remember, we talked about God designed the universe with frequency and vibration right down to the atom with electrons and protons. And if you remember, we had the uh, the double split where you send these particles through and it's not until you observe them that they change from a waveform, which is potentiality, into a particle form. And then the particle is what things are created from, right? The desk that I have, you know, this, this mouse that I have in my hand, those are all part particles. And they create things. So when we observe, when we put our attention to things, we're actually creating then we also talked about you're the captain of your ship. And if you remember the illustration where, you know, you've got your, your, your goggles out and you're looking out at the horizon, but then you've got these workers that are actually inside of you and they're your DNA, they're your, your chemical balance, uh, uh, your chemistry in your body. And the, the ones that are working inside, they can't see the outside. They're only responding to the thoughts that you are sending, the signals that you're sending. So as you observe your surroundings and your circumstances, you get to decide how you react. In fact, you know, the illustrations earlier were perfect, right? You get to decide. Your body then responds to those thoughts accordingly. So if you're having thoughts of anxiousness and fear and worry, then all of a sudden those chemicals start to react and then your body reacts um, to the signals that you send them. And just like that ship, right? If if you say, hey, everything looks good, it's smooth sailing, then that's what you're going to experience in this life is smooth sailing. But if you're sending signals of, 
man, this is a mess up here. I can't believe, you know, my life sucks. Then your ship is going to basically sink. Your mind is so powerful that you can actually trick your body to respond in certain ways. And we saw that with the placebo effect. And I believe that was, uh, that was last week that we talked about the placebo effect where you can take a sugar pill and you can, you can assign value to that pill and say, I'm going to be healthy. I'm going to be strong. I'm going to be healed. And when you assign value to that pill, even though it's a sugar pill, you can take that and all of a sudden your body reacts to the way you think about that pill. And that's the placebo effect. And then, uh, and then the last point is it, is, it is time for a software upgrade, time to renew your mind to this understanding that we are not a victim of circumstance, but a victor. So again, going back to your, your guys' uh, stories, I, it's exactly what you're doing now is, is you're renewing your mind and, and you're seeing that you're a victor over your circumstances. So I applaud you for, for what you guys are doing. You're doing the work. And the software upgrade is, I am to present or offer my will to God to renew my mind. And then I'll be able to see God's will, which is everything good, everything well, and everything pleasing and complete perfection. So we're building ourselves up one day, one moment at a time. All right, so we are going to uh, to jump into today's um, topic. And this is Dr. Joe Dispenza. He's also the same one that, uh, that did the placebo, um, where he has a book actually out that says, you are the placebo. So this one is... Um, is is a different video talking about a different topic. So I'll go ahead and let it run and we'll take it from on, on the other side. If you think that your thoughts have something to do with your future, just from a theoretical standpoint, that your thoughts create your destiny and you think 60 to 70,000 thoughts in one day and 90% of those thoughts are the same thoughts as the day before, well, then your life isn't gonna change very much as long as you're thinking the same way. And it, those, those same thoughts lead to the same choices. The same choices lead to the same behaviors. The same behaviors create the exact same experiences and we anticipate the same feelings or emotions from those experiences. And those emotions are the payoff that drive our very same thoughts. Well, our biology, our neurocircuitry, our neurochemistry, our hormones, and even our gene expression will be equal to how we think, how we act, and how we feel. And how we think, how we act, and how we feel is called our personality. And our personality creates our personal reality. That's it. So the present personality who's listening to this show has created the present personal reality called their life. So if you can latch on to this idea, if you want to create a new life, a new personal reality, you got to change your personality, which means you better start thinking about what you've been thinking about and changing it. You begin to become conscious of your unconscious actions or habits or behaviors and modify them. And then we have to begin to look at the emotions that we live by every single day that are keep us connected to the past and decide do these emotions belong in our future. So most people are trying to create a new personal reality as the same personality and it doesn't work. You literally have to become someone else. So the principle in neuroscience says that nerve cells that fire together, wire together. You keep thinking the same way, making the same choices, demonstrating the same habits, uh, creating the same experiences that stamp the same networks of neurons into the same patterns, all for the familiar feeling called you. And you do that for 10 years on end. You're going to begin to hardwire certain patterns in your brain that becomes your identity. And by the time we're 35 years old, it kind of becomes fixed, right? And psychology used to say that you can't change that, but we now know that you can. So then that kind of box in the brain, that is the habit of ourselves. It's a, uh, we're 95% of the time running a series of programs. So then sitting and doing the work, we have to become disentangled from those programs and so the moment you decide to do something differently or make a new choice what most people don't want to face is that discomfort and that 
that discomfort, that that uncertainty, that lack of predictability, the that 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 unknown is what people are afraid of because they'd rather live in guilt. At least they can predict who they're going to be than take a chance in possibility. You have to really begin to mentally rehearse. Ask yourself at the end of your day. I do this every day. How'd I do? How'd I do today, bro? How'd you do? Did you do good? Where'd you fall from grace? What was it that caused you to go unconscious for the rest of the day? Like, what was that moment? Now, if you're a student of life, you'll begin to contemplate, well, it was that person that said that thing, then I reacted, or this, I got this email, or things didn't go my way, and I started feeling angry or frustrated or fearful. The next time that happens, how could I evolve my experience? Now, you may have to search for some answers of the best model to build, or you may actually have a long contemplation and start to go, God, the next time that happens, I think I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do that, or I'm going to plan my behaviors. And the act of closing your eyes and rehearsing what you're going to do begins to install the neurological hardware in your brain to look like you already did it. Now the brain is no longer a record of the past. Now it's a map to the future. And if you keep installing that hardware, the hardware will become a software program, which means you'll just start acting like a happy person. Why? There's no magic there. You install the circuitry. So that's more important than the news. Right. It's more important than answering any email or any text. If you can begin to just think about how you're going to do it differently, that's the building process neurologically already. If you think All right. Pretty awesome, huh? So any uh, initial comments from uh from the video? No, the funny thing is I've actually seen that video before. Uh, or something similar to what he was speaking. And I always, uh, I always thought about that, uh, that pattern of living, living the same day over and over and not really doing anything new out of new and co create. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we've got these habits that we've developed, uh, over the, over the, the years. And, uh, it's in fact, there's the title of the book, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. Because if you don't like your current self and your current situation, then you need to break the habit of what got you there. And it all starts with the mind. And we can be the co-creators. We can be the ones that can design our, 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 our near, our, our new future. So here, here's the, you know, here's the statement, same thoughts every day lead to the same choices, which then leads to the same behaviors, which leads to the same exact experiences, the same feelings and emotions, the same, same thoughts in our biology and neurocircuitry in our brains leads to our chemi chemistry and hormones and gene expressions. And then that leads to how we think, act, and feel. And it all starts with upper left-hand corner, the same thoughts you have every day. So we need to change our thoughts. We need to change to the mind of Christ. So the way we think, act, and feel leads to our personality. That leads to your personal reality. So if you want to create a new life, you need to change your personality, to change who you are, how you think, act, and feel. And and sorry for keep going back, but uh, you know those stories that you guys shared, right? You're catching yourself in the moment of that's not the way I want to think. That's not the way I want to feel. That's not the way I want to act. You're catching yourself. 
And then you're saying, no, I want to do this instead. And that's all part of the rewiring your brain. So you are literally physically, mentally, hormonally, your gene expression is all being changed because of these new thoughts. You're basically becoming a new person, a new, you're developing a new reality because of these choices that you're making. So again, I, I applaud you for, uh, for doing that. I'd also recommend uh, reading the book uh, by Dr. Joe Dispenza. Uh, it's a very, very good read. So why don't we, why don't we want to do this? Why don't we want to make the change? It's because change causes discomfort. It's the fear, it's the uncertainty, it's the lack of predictability, the unknown. And that people would rather live in fear and guilt because it's the familiar and it's predictable. But what we're asking, what we're asking you to do, and even what God is asking you to do, is to become born again, to become a new creation. Second Corinthians 5:17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is past, behold, new has come. And that what leads to that is a little bit of the, the unknown. It's it's not predictable. It's called living by faith, not by sight. Living from the unseen, which is a past study we've done, versus the seen. Living from the inside, not from the outside. And I I, I took the visual from from the the uh, the uh, the video, and I noticed there was a couple of times where people were looking through a window, but their blinds are there. And it's interesting that the uh, the term for these things are called blinds, right? You open the blinds, you close the blinds, and blind is right, you can't see. And when we have these negative thoughts, they blind us to our potential future, right? It's like looking at our future, into the future, but we can't see it because we're blinded by it. We're blinded by the fear, the uncertainty, the lack of predictability, the, the, the beliefs, the negative beliefs that we've had through the years um, that has caused us to be the person we are today, right? So what, what do we do with those blinds that are in front of us? We need to lift them, right? How do we break free? We create a new me, a new future. We rewire our brain. And it all starts with gratitude, with gratitude. That is the start of this new journey, is rewiring our brain to gratitude. And even in the difficult situations, like losing a phone or having somebody call you and be angry at you, you still have the attitude of gratitude and it changes, it changes everything. It changes the frequency, changes the vibration of where we're at and also those that are around us because it is a frequency. It is a vibration. So um, I'm going to kind of turn, turn the corner for just a second, but before I do that, I'm wondering if anybody has any questions or comments based on what we've talked about so far. Okay. So what we're going to now talk about is applying tools for transformation. How do we get out of breaking the habit of being myself and creating that new future? How do I get those blinds out of the way? How do I remove them? How do I get in a spirit of gratitude so that I can see a new future for me? And the tools for transformation, there are five of them. And how I came about to these five is over the course of my lifetime, um, and in particular over the last probably uh, 10, 10 to 12 years, uh, basically since around 2011, 
I've been on a journey where I've been renewing my mind and seeing things differently. What I have found is there's five things that I implemented over that time period. It also kind of corresponds with the 10 truths, right? I also developed those 10 truths because those are what I was experiencing in my life. So I documented that with the 10 truths. So now I'm in a process of documenting what got me, what allowed me to be able to renew my mind, to put on the mind of Christ, to have the mind of Christ. And there's five of them. The first one is gratitude, then identity, then meditate, imagine, and co-create. So these are the, the tools for transformation. So let's start with gratitude. Um, starting today, and I'm sorry, there's a there's a wrong date on there. Uh, starting today, um, we have what we call the 21 days of gratitude. And what I'd like you to do is to go on our website and pull down the 21 days of gratitude and go through the book that's on there. And I think some of you might have already done that. But what I want us to do is be in the habit of each and every day writing down the 10 blessings, 10 things that you're grateful for. And each day, each of those 21 days, there'll be an activity that uh, that you'll practice throughout the day. And at the end of each day, you want to go to bed, you scan through your day and find that one thing that you're most grateful for. All of that is described in the 21 Days of Gratitude which is on our website. And I'll show you that um, in a slide further down. Okay. So we want to maintain the spirit of gratitude because uh, this is of utmost importance as far as the change that we want to make in our lives. It starts with gratitude. We also want um, to do the 21 days of identity. So after you're done with the 21 days of gratitude, we want to go into 21 days of identity because divinity is your identity. We want to continue to write down those 10 blessings, the things that we're grateful for. And um, there'll be a practice in identity that, um, that you're to do. And then at the end of each day, you scan through your day and look for the things that you're most thankful for. But it all starts with identity. And we did that identity, if you remember um, a couple of uh, sessions ago, where we did the 21 days of identity, we saw that we're, we're his beloved, we're his bride, we're, um, um, you know, we're his ambassadors, we're his dwelling place. So it all goes to identity. Then um, meditation. So if you'll notice, you know, one of the five was meditate. So I've got a cool dual, uh, deal for you guys uh, for, um, for, the next until the 16th of October, Headspace, which is a how to meditate website, as well as giving you tons of meditations, whether it's anxiety or fear or depression. Um, they have a lot of uh, tools on how to meditate. So if you've never done meditation before, now's the time. So go to this website, Headspace, you click on this code and you'll actually get a free 60 day trial, totally free. If you decide you want to do it, it costs $70 a year. I probably should have done a calculation. I'm not sure how much that is a month, but uh, it's less than $10 a month. Um, so starting tomorrow, starting Monday, you will start the practice of meditation and sorry for the language, but I would like you, I'm suggesting, I'm recommending that you start a practice of meditation. This will be your quiet time, a time of prayer, a time of silence. This will be your time to purpose, purposely tap into the mind of Christ because where's the mind of Christ? It's here. It's already here. And all I'm asking is three to five minutes of sitting quietly with your eyes closed, observing your breath, Going to Headspace, they'll teach you how to do that. This is These are the tools for transformation. So if you want to create a new life for yourself, these are the steps on how to do it.
And then uh, imagination, visualization. Um, we are actually going to create a vision board and create a life purpose statement. So we're going to do that here. And it's going to be kind of like a homework assignment for, for you. But um, again, you're going to be creating a new you. You're going to step outside of yourself and you're going to say, what do I really want for my life? So we're going to work on a vision board as well as a life purpose statement. And then the, the last one is co-create. The way we co-create is we we do all those things before this, right? We're, we're, we has, have gratitude. We understand our identity. Um, we, uh, we do the meditation, right? And, and we do the imagination. And then all of a sudden from there, we co-create. And each week we're going to write down our experiences, share each week. And, and that way we raise our knowing when we see how lives are changed, like we're already seeing now, then it brings the knowing to us. That's like, Hey, that's possible. That is possible. All right. So here's what I'm asking this group to do is starting with the 21 days of gratitude and 21 days of identity, um, counting your blessings every day. There's a YouTube video, which you can go online. Um, the book is online as well. Meditate three to five minutes a day. Continue to memorize the 10 truths. We're going to start to work on a vision board and then creating your life purpose. All of this is in view of creating a new you and the future that you want. We don't want to be living by default. We want to live on purpose. All right. So, so there we have it. Um, so here's the mind of Christ, right? And these are the five, uh, the five transformational tools. The first, it starts with gratitude, then identity, then meditation, imagination, and co-create. And this is a continuous circle. It just keeps going. So the more we co-create, the more gratitude we have. When we understand our identity, we'll be more grateful when we meditate, we'll understand our identity. When we imagine, we'll, we'll do that through our meditation. And then that will cause us to co-create. And it just is a continuous circle. And all of this is putting on the mind of Christ and seeing how life truly is. All right. I know I've thrown a lot at you. Any, uh, any questions before we move on? So these are all things that you're already doing with the exception of the gratitude. And that's why we have to start with that. We've always looked at ourselves. We always thought about our identity, whether we know it or not. Meditation also is thinking about life and what you want. You're imagining what you want and you, you're always co-creating, whether you know it or not. You're always doing those things. But the gratitude is something that, that I know we've been talking a lot about, but it's not something that we default to. Um, it's something that we have to work at to be grateful for, for a life that, uh, that we want. So that's why we always start with gratitude and then everything else kind of falls in. All right, so here we go. What... What I'm, what I'm going to ask you guys to do is asking yourself the question, what do you want for your life? And there's going to be two ways we're going to do that. We're going to look at, um, we're going to look at our current mindset and the new mindset that we want. And what I mean by current mindset is describe what your current mindset is for the categories below money, job your spouse or significant other, your free time, um, your kids or your grandkids. Um, what do you want for your life? But what is your current mindset? And mindset is what you currently believe, think and feel about that category. If you want to know what you believe, look at your current life experience, because life is a mirror which reflects back, right? And then number two, ask yourself, am I satisfied with my current life experience? 
if you feel you want a change, using your imagination, describe what you would like to see instead. What changes would you need to make for that to be a reality today? What changes would you need to make um, in what you believe, think, and feel? Using your imagination, what would life, what would living life to the fullest look like to you? And then I want you to record your answers. Um, and then we're going to discuss those in our next group meeting. Okay. So are you satisfied? What if true transformation is possible? Do you want to find out how to get there? And these are the categories that I'd like you to dive into. And between now and next week, you don't have to have it complete. We're going to work on this uh, over the next uh, two or three weeks, but start money, health, job, friends, spouse, kids, free time. But remember, as a co-creator, we get to choose what. We get to choose what we want, but the how and the when is determined by God. So that's why we're co-creating. We're not going to set this up and then think, okay, now how am I going to get there? You know, what investments do I need to make? Um, how is that going to be even possible? And I, I want this by such and such a date. So co-creation is you just ask for the what. We ask not because, sorry, we receive not because we ask not, but the how and the when is determined by God. And that's where the co-creation comes in. We do this together. So there's a link to the website and I'm gonna go ahead and click on it right here. And you guys can still see my screen, right? Yep. So uh, as you go on this, this website, you click on the mind sheet, uh, the mindset worksheet. You click on that and you download it. And then this is what's gonna come up. You guys can still see this? Yep. So it's a Word document. Yep. So, so all I'm asking is you come in here and you say your current mindset for money is uh, money is hard to come by, right? And then your new mindset is, uh, you know, money comes to me easily and naturally, right? So this is what I'm asking all of you to do is to come into this and write down Give it some thought, give it some meditation, give it some imagination. Um, get it from knowing who you are and your true identity, not your old identity, but your new identity. So have that mindset as you're putting this together. And then next week, we'll, we'll go through this and uh, we'll share our findings. And um, the whole idea is to do this together and to um, to change our minds, to change, you know, having those blind uh, those blinds down. We want to open those blinds and see a clear and bright future for us. All right, that's all I had for this morning. Does everybody understand what we're trying to do? Yes, trying to get into a rhythm of number one, rewiring, number two, learning the proper ways of meditation, um, and number three, just getting in the habit of, I, I, crazy enough as it is, is, is lately I've had some lucid dreaming, mm. and a I looked online ways to lucid dream, which is having control of your dreaming or being aware of dreaming, and it said that you write your dream down right before you go to bed or after mm -hmm. so this kind of reminds me of the same way as like when you write things down your brain captures it as right. a photographical me memory and whether you believe that it will be in there or not it will because you're writing it down and so i, I do believe there is a lot of power and if you if you talk to a lot of people that that are spiritual or you know, in, in that hundred fold zone, they write their stuff, they write their days down, you know, and things right. that they're grateful for. Mm -hmm. But I also, you know, know that it can be difficult uh, to write down and get into that 
uh, pattern. So I do believe even if we don't write it down, I think we should at least think about it throughout the day or at least a point in the day where you can go, hey, I'm grateful for uh, electricity and water because we could have we could not have right. that right. or just small things like that. That, you know, because some days I'm not I don't have a ton of things to be grateful for, but I do, you know, the small things. So, yeah, you know, my recommendation is you do that in the morning. Yeah. Uh, and that way it starts your day out. And also, as you're doing the 21 days of gratitude, there are um, different things, uh, uh, practices or activities that you do throughout the day. One example is is money. Um, you actually take a dollar bill and you put on the dollar bill, I'm grateful for the money I have in my life. And you put a little post-it note on it and you put it somewhere that you're going to remind yourself. So every time that you pull out that dollar bill, then you go, oh, yes, thank you for the money that I have in my life. Right. And it's and it's a reminder. So there's oh. these little practices that you're to do throughout the day. Or there was an interesting one. Uh, one of my friends, he would put money and tape it around his house. Not like a hundred dollar bill, but like one dollar. He'd put like on the refrigerator or he put one like by his mirror. And it just it, it's a pattern of, OK, I, I have it. Yes. It's there. Yes. But do I need it, you know, at that moment in time? And it just reminds you, like, hey, I have it, you know, but I don't have to take it off my wall or something. So I'd go into his house and there'd just be dollar bills everywhere. <laughs> and I'd be like, don't you, don't you, don't you need this for like so something tomorrow? And he's like, no. He's like, why? For what? And he oh, that's just, awesome. it's, I love that idea. It's getting it in your mind, you know, it's his vision board for him. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and, you know, speaking of the vision board, so all of this will come down to a vision board and we'll talk about what that looks like. Uh, but the idea is at the end of this and we'll call it three or four weeks from now is uh, each one of us will have a vision board um, and we will see what the, the future is that we want to have for ourselves. We'll have it spelled out. We'll have it visual for us and, uh, and we'll know that. Um, because right now, you know, we're living by default. We don't know what we want. Um, and it just, life kind of comes at us, you know, in different ways. But we, being a co-creator, we can, and I'll use the word manipulate, we can create the future that we want. But we have to know what we want first, right? And uh, so that's the idea. All right, so going back to our 30, 60, 100 fold, you know, the 30 fold, they would say, well, my future is in God's hands. It's his will for my life. That is what is most important. If God's will for me to suffer or get sick, it's because I deserve it. And he's teaching me a lesson, right? That's what the 30 fold. And I, I believe that for a long time. The 60 fold is my future is in my hands and God's hands, but I need to pray fast and do all the right things so I don't miss his will. So there's there's a chance that you're going to miss it. There are bad things that happen that I need to bind and loose because they are of Satan. So they're still battling. They're still struggling. It's still work-based. But then a hundredfold is my future is being who I already am now, right? I have everything that I need. All my needs are constantly met. They're here now in the present. And the mind of Christ is in me. It's not out there somewhere. It's not coming one of these days. I don't have to work for it. I don't have to fight for it. I just, it comes by rest and it's already in me. That's a hundredfold. So please remember to continue to work on the 10 truths. And the way you answer the question of how good is God determines your yield. If you really believe that God is already in us and he's given us everything and all we have to do is rest, we will have a hundredfold yield um so again all of this information is on our website so if you click on on this link you can uh you can go to the website i'll probably end up sending uh emails to you guys just so that you have that and you can pull that up uh on on uh, on your phone or on your laptop and then of course we're always on facebook so you can reach out on facebook and in fact this is where the teaching will be i'll upload uh uh, this video that uh, that then you can remind yourself of what's uh, what we're doing. All right. So again, 21. Oh, in fact, uh, I didn't show you that, but 21 days of gratitude. So if you go into challenges, 
There's 21 days of gratitude. You click on that and there's a little video that's on there, but then here's the, uh, the gratitude book. So you just click on here and you don't even have to download this. You can come in here every day and just go, okay, today is day one, count your blessings, day two, day three. You just come in here and then just do your reading, uh, come into the website and, and you're good to go. Also on here is the, um, is the uh, count your blessings log. So you can print this out um, and there's 21 pages obviously, but these are counting your blessings, write down 10 blessings in your life that you're thankful for. So this is just a blank sheet for you to, uh, to fill out each and every day. All right. So that's all I had for this morning. Thanks as always for, uh, for joining us on this Sundays with Doug. Always appreciate your time, your insights. And I love hearing your stories about um, how you're rewiring your brain, building new habits and creating this new identity for you. Uh, so uh, I I've been loving that. So thank you for sharing. And uh, we will see you next week. All right. All right. All right. Bye for now.